exclusive story about the whole purpose of politics in the first place. Uh, the reason to seek public office, the reason to get elected in the first place, what your job is if you win an election, is that you get to make policy. And the whole point of making policy is supposedly to address problems in our country. Here's a simple problem. Uh, Mississippi, the great state of Mississippi, has health trouble. Heart disease is the number one cause of death in the United States, while well, the highest rate of heart disease death in the country is in Mississippi. Diabetes, also a massive American health problem. Alabama and Mississippi, it turns out, are neck and neck on being the worst for diabetes. The most recent nationwide stats put Alabama at 50 out of 50 states and Mississippi at 49th. The really astonishing number, though, in Mississippi is infant mortality. For every thousand kids born in the United States, how many of those kids do not live to their first birthday? Uh, overall, this is the rate in the country for infant mortality. Here's what it is in Mississippi. Mm. Mississippi has the worst infant death rate in the country. Not only is Mississippi the worst in the country, if Mississippi were a country, it would rank below Sri Lanka and below Botswana. It would be 83rd in the world in terms of infant mortality. And if you look internally at what's going on in Mississippi, what explains that problem, you end up very quickly realizing that the issue is in racial disparity. Uh, these are Mississippi's own numbers. This is infant mortality for white mothers in Mississippi. That's the infant mortality rate in Mississippi over time. And this is the infant mortality rate, that red line there, for African-American mothers in Mississippi. So white mothers in Mississippi, they have roughly the same rate as the rest of the country. But the reason Mississippi is the worst in the country, the reason Mississippi has worse than Botswana's infant mortality rate, is because African-American women have more than double the infant mortality rate of white women there. And it makes the state the worst in the country. This is a real problem. This is a life and death problem. And it has been bad in Mississippi for a long time. Now, to Mississippi's credit, they have decided to make this a priority. They are working on this. Uh, the state health department has elevated the issue so that the state can work on it in a concentrated way. Uh, the state epidemiologist, the chief nurse of the state, the office of health data in the state, the state health officer, they're all putting together reports specifically on this problem, reports to the state legislature, so the policymakers in the state legislature can try to fix this problem. The most recent report shows that they believe they brought their horrible infant mortality rate down. They say they've got it down below 10. Uh, it's still awful. It's still one of the worst in the country. But when the next nationwide stats come out, Mississippi may no longer be the worst in the country anymore because they're working on it. But they still need to keep working on it. And lucky for Mississippi, on their state board of health, which decides policy direction for the state on health issues, it's the board that appoints that state health officer, that appoints the state's overall health plan, that approves the state's overall health plan for its overall health policies. Luckily, on that board, Mississippi is lucky enough to have somebody uniquely qualified to understand and help the state address this issue that the state really, really wants to address. Uh, his name is Carl Reddix. He grew up in Biloxi, Mississippi. He went to the Northeast for his education. He got his medical degree at Tufts. Uh, he went to Harvard to do a master's in public health. So he has a public health background, which in this case may be just as critical as having an MD as being a practicing doctor. Uh, he also, though, went, went to Johns Hopkins, to the Johns Hopkins. He did his residency there as an OBGYN. And then after all that, God bless Mississippi, luckily for his home state, this incredibly talented, perfectly well-qualified, highly educated, Harvard and Johns Hopkins trained African-American son of Mississippi, OBGYN, he decided to go home and to practice in his home state. He could have practiced anywhere in the country. He would have been a star wherever he went with that kind of a background. He decided to go home and practice in Jackson, Mississippi. And then, yes, the state's Republican governor, Haley Barber, last year appointed him, appointed Dr. Reddix to be on that state board of health. Given the problems that Mississippi is facing and given what they are trying to fix in terms of policy, somebody like Dr. Reddix has to be seen by the state of Mississippi as just a godsend. You'd think, right? The new Republican administration in Mississippi has just fired him. He had been serving Mississippi on that health board since last July, but the new Republican lieutenant governor in Mississippi has now blocked his Senate confirmation process and insisted that he be taken off this state board. The lieutenant governor, you see there on the right, says he wants the state to instead pick a, quote, qualified doctor to help guide state health policy. Because being a born and bred Mississippian, Harvard and Johns Hopkins trained OBGYN with a master's in public health means you're not qualified? 
Not anymore. Not in Mississippi. Not in 2012. Not in Republican politics today. At least not in this iteration of Republican politics today. The reason Mississippi has taken this doctor out of the health policy process that rather desperately needs him in Mississippi is because one of the consultancies that Dr. Reddix has is with the Jackson Women's Health Organization. Dr. Reddix does not perform abortions. He is not paid by the Jackson Women's Health Organization. But if a woman is having an abortion or any other kind of procedure at that clinic and there is a complication and something goes wrong and that woman needs to be admitted to the hospital, Dr. Reddix has agreed to take over care of that woman when she gets to the hospital. Dr. Reddix says this almost never happens. But what this means in practical terms is that if there ever is a complication, a woman doesn't just get dumped into the emergency room at a local hospital, she gets admitted to the hospital under the care of this qualified, experienced, highly trained physician. That's it. That's the scandal. And Mississippi's Republican governor and lieutenant governor have decided that because of that, he cannot be on the Board of Health. He cannot participate in health policy. His public service is not wanted by the state of Mississippi. He has been fired. And now, on the State Board of Health in Mississippi, which has the worst infant mortality rate in the country, among its many other problems, which has a huge racial disparity, specifically in its horrible infant mortality problem, now in the state of Mississippi, thanks to this year's garden variety anti-abortion Republican politics, there is no African-American medical doctor and there is no OBGYN on the State Board of Health. And 